Okay, so solving inequalities where we just have x's, you know, sort of linear inequalities, um, it's not that awful of a thing. You just have to be really careful with the switching signs when you're dividing or multiplying by a negative. But outside of that, pretty much everything else is straightforward. What's a little bit more of a challenge is if you want to solve an inequality that is a quadratic, so there are x squareds appearing. And this really is um, a challenge until you sort of feel comfortable with the idea. So let's walk through one really carefully and see how you would solve a quadratic inequality. Suppose I wanted to find all the solutions to 2x squared plus 5x minus 12 is greater than or equal to 0. Well, how would I do that? Well, the first thing that I would try to do, as I would if this were an equal sign, is factor this thing. So let's factor, and let's hope, in fact, that it can be factored. And let's see. So I'm going to try a 2x here and an x here. This tells me that both signs will be opposite. But I can't just cavalierly put in plus minus or minus plus because these aren't the same. So I'll have to do a little bit of thinking and seeing how I'm going to actually get that combination to work out just right. I'm going to want uh, a number, two numbers that multiplied to give 12 but combined with this 2 to actually give me um, a plus 5. So let's see. Uh, how about if I think about 4 times 3? What if I put the 4 here, let's think about this together, and the 3 here. Here I'd get a 3x. Here I'd get an 8x. If I subtract that just right, I would get the 5. So I think what I want to do is put a plus here and a minus here, and that seems to work. And you can check that and see this really does uh, foil out to give me this. OK, well, great. Well, now I've got you know, sort of this thing going on here. And what I have to do now is figure out when is this positive, or in fact, greater than or equal to 0. Well, here's a way of thinking about this. Look, I've got two numbers, and their product is bigger than or equal to 0. What are the possible signs for these numbers? Well, there's two possibilities. Either this number is positive and this number is positive, or the other possibility is this number is negative, and at the same time, this number is negative. So actually, there's two different cases we have to consider. The first case is positive, positive, and the second case is negative, negative. OK, well now, how should we proceed here? Well, an easy way of actually putting together the signs of these things is to actually make what's called a sign chart. And a sign chart basically means just putting pluses and minuses wherever these things are positive or negative. So the first thing I would do is find out when these things actually equal 0. And that's easy to do. Because for this thing to be 0, I just would solve this and find out when that's 0. Let's do that really fast. So I would have, oops, I wouldn't have a 3. I'm going to have a 3 later in life, but not now. Let me start off here. I would have a 2 x minus 3 equals 0. So where does that equal 0? Well, 2x would equal 3. So x would equal 3 over 2. So this is going to be 0 at 3 over 2. OK, when is this 0? Well, that's easy to see. That's going to be 0 when x equals negative 4. So if I make a sign chart, I'll just mark down these points here. I have negative 4. That's where this is 0. And then I've got 3 over 2, way over here. And let's see. If I put little lines here like this, I know that if I plug in minus 4 into here, that's going to give me 0. And why? Because this term is 0, and 0 times anything will be 0. So I know that this thing is 0 here. And what about if I plug in 3 over 2 into this? Well, I know that's going to be 0, too, because now this term will be 0, and that term multiplied by anything will still be 0. So in fact, here I know this thing is 0. But in these intervals here, I don't know what's going on. So how would I find this out? Well, all you have to actually do is pick just a random point in here and see what the sign of this is going to be. It's either going to be positive or it'll be negative. So let's do this one here in this interval right here. So all I'm going to do in this region, you see what happened? I cut the world up into these three pieces. This piece, this piece, and that piece. I cut up by seeing where this thing equals 0. So that's the sort of the balance point. And now I'm going to look at each of these regions and determine what the sign of this thing is. I'm searching for where that thing is positive. 
but I'm going to see where that is. So all you have to do is literally pick a random point in between. So what's a good point to pick? Any number will work between minus 4 and 3 over 2. Well, a good point between minus 4 and 3 over 2 is 0. That's in here. So suppose I picked 0. If I plug in 0, which would be maybe like right over here, if I plug in 0 for x, what would I see? 0 plus 0 minus 12. So this thing here would equal negative 12. So that means at 0, this thing is negative. That means it's going to be negative no matter what point you pick in here. So all this is negative region, negative, 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 negative region. And I found out it was a negative region because I just picked one point, an easy point, plugged it in, and saw what the sign was. OK, now what would I do uh, over here in this region? Well, again, I'd pick a point. I could pick any point at all. doesn't matter. Let's see. 3 halves is 1 and a half. I need something bigger than that. How about if I just pick 2? So I'll pick 2 as my point, and I'm going to plug 2 into here. Now, you could do plug in 2 into one of two places. You could either plug it into the original thing, 2 times 2 squared plus 5 times 2 minus 12, and compute what that number is. All you care about is if it's positive or negative. But I'll tell you what I do. I'm lazy. And remember, the good mathematician is the lazy mathematician. I just take 2, and I'm going to plug it into these things and multiply it. And it'll be easier. Watch what happens. If I plug 2 into here, that gives me 4 minus 3. Now, I know that's 1, but all I care about is, is it positive or negative? So I'm going to say, well, it's positive, and I'm going to forget that it's actually 1, and just keep in my head positive, OK? What happens when I put in 2 here? When I put in 2 here, I see that's 2 plus 4 is 6. All I care about is positive. This is positive, and that's positive. What's their product? It's positive. So at 2, this thing is positive, which means that everywhere from this point onward, this is positive land. This land is positive land. This land. Now, what about here in this region? Well, I'd have to pick a point you know, way over here. Now, you may think, well, let me pick like you know, minus 5. You can pick minus 5 if you want. But let me actually show you that you can be quite dramatic. Let me pick minus 100, just to show you it doesn't make a difference. All I'm concerned with is just the sign. So if I plug in minus 100 here, will this be positive or negative? Well, let's see. Minus 100 times 2 is minus 200. Minus 200 minus 3 is actually minus 203. But all that matters is minus. So you don't care about the actual value, just the sign. So this is negative here. Now, what happens when I plug in minus 100 in here? I have minus 100 plus 4. Well, that plus 4 helps a little bit, but that thing is mighty negative, right? In fact, negative 96. So this is negative. Negative times a negative, what is that? That's a positive something. Well, if that's positive, that means this whole land is positive. And so now I see exactly the sign chart for this particular function. So all I want to do is know where is it positive. I want to know when it's bigger than or equal to 0. Well, I can read it off the chart. It's positive on this part of the wing. See these two wings here? Am I allowed to actually use these endpoints? Well, these endpoints are where the thing actually equals 0. Am I allowed to equal 0? Yes, in this case, I am allowed to equal 0. So in fact, my solution would be. I can actually show you the solution set. It's going to be equaling minus 4 and then all this positive land, or equaling 3 halves and all this, I'm sorry, all this negative land, which makes it positive, or this land here. So that's the graph of the solution. You could actually use that as the graph of the solution. You, some people actually will accept the answer or want the answer in this form. So in fact, the green actually represents the answer. If you wanted to write it out in interval notation, how would that look? I just would copy this down, minus infinity out to minus 4, including the minus 4, but never including the negative infinity. And then I pick up the action at 3 halves with a bracket, because I'm including that, out to plus infinity. And then since I'm taking one or the other, I take their union. So this is how to write the answer in interval notation. And this is how to write the answer sort of graphically. But notice, all that's happening here is I'm finding all the values for x which make that positive. Great. I'll show you another one up next, and you can see sort of how this thing all plays out in general using a sign chart. So try to get this into long-term memory because it is really tricky. The thing to remember is always factor, make a sign chart, putting down where the function actually equals 0. That will sort of separate the positive land from the negative land. You see, that's where it switches. And then just pick a point in each region and find out what the sign is. And then presto, you can report your news, report the answer. OK, I'll see you up next.